Ostensibly, this video was about aligning images, but that's not really what it's about. That was the hook to get you to come here. Really what I want to talk about are the vagaries, basically, of one-shot color camera data, as well as uh, CMOS type sensors. Those two elements can affect how easy or difficult it is to align images. So I'm going to show you an example, but I'm going to use it in a way that I think will explain all of these ideas in one kind of encapsulated demonstration. So let me show you what I mean. This comes from uh, one of these questions where the individual had one-shot color camera data. If we zoom in here, you can see that this is a Bayer matrix type sensor. In fact, this comes from a Canon digital DSLR type camera. He provided this as well as a flat field image. And then his complaint was that he said he was unable to align the images. So that's, that's kind of the, the raw material, the initial conditions. Flat field image, raw data, and can't align. Well, that leads to a number of kind of topics. One of the topics is when you calibrate data, of course, you would like to have a complete calibration set. That would include darks and maybe biases. It depends on the sensor. Without them, you run into some problems. And one of the very uh, most significant problems that you'll get with one-shot color camera data, as well as CMOS sensors, is that you'll have hot pixels. And I'd like to scroll around here. This is an image of a globular cluster. I think, yeah, this is M13. You can see the stars in here, though they're not very bright. The brightest things in this image, even though this has not yet been debayered, I think that if we scroll around here, we'll be able to find, and I'm going to go find a good one here, find hot pixels that look like this. This, although it looks like a single little tiny pixel, right, doesn't look looks innocuous, doesn't look like it could be anything bad, but because it is brighter than the stars, that poses a problem. It poses a problem because later during the process of aligning the data, if it is not removed, depending upon how the algorithm is set up to detect stars, it may preferentially detect hot pixels rather than stars for reasons that I'm going to demonstrate. So that's the element of data uh, that looks like this. The elements are that we have stars, but we also have certain kinds of expected, you know, artifacts of the, the sensor itself. Now, as part of this particular problem, he did have lots of, of raw data here. So you can see that we have lots of frames. Now, they all look basically like the one I'm showing. However, I will very briefly just open those so that we can, uh, I'll just open a small subset of them, so that we can see that they are not aligned. And that, of course, is important to see as well. Here we go. We zoom in, and we blink. And sure enough, they're not aligned. They are somewhat dithered. It's not clear to me when I looked at all of them that they were dithered very randomly. It looks like a slight dither with a kind of a tracking shift or um, trailing tracking there. Let's uh, close these. There we go. So if I'm unable to calibrate the data, the next thing I would do is debayer the data. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. We can go under a process here for debayer. This has already been loaded as a pure raw image. That's why we can go to debayer. Now, the way that the debayer process works, it's great to actually look at the manual, I'm going to show you that, is that uh, we need to know what the pattern of the Bayer matrix is, and then we're going to choose the method by which we create a new image from this uh, currently mosaic form of the image. So we're going to assume, for example, it's not critical for what I'm about to demonstrate, that the automatic method is determining the correct pattern for the color filter array uh, for this particular image when I debayer it. It's the other thing that I want to really point out because it, it is connected to this idea of how we're going to deal with hot pixels. There is the normal way that, or the, I should say the default method for debayering an image or demosaicing an image. It is the VNG method. 
And the way the V and G method works is that it looks at a fairly large, significant number of neighboring pixels. And from those neighboring pixels, it calculates based on the, the reds, the blues, and the greens that are surrounding what color it's going to put in a particular pixel. And then it goes to the next pixel and looks at all of those neighbors as well. Um, it has a gradient-like approach, so it's a weighted approach of looking at all of those neighboring values in the, in the color filter array. Whereas there's another method, and this is the simplest one. It's called the super pixel method. Super pixel in this case, I don't, I don't know where the name comes from. I have to think about that. The way that I think of it, though, is it's, you're literally extracting the pixels um, at each quad group of four colors. Of course, two of the colors are green. And depending upon how you want to deal with those two greens, generally what you do is you average the two greens together, or you can create four pictures. Well, we don't really need four. So we only need a triad of images to, of course, create a color picture so we can extract all the reds, and we're not going to do any interpolation. Extract all the greens, all the blues, and then create a color picture from that. So that is what the super pixel method does. And the thing to understand about this method is because we're only taking all the red pixels and putting them together, then all the greens and all the blues, the number of total number of pixels in the image um, is less than the size of the original image. It's half the size of the original image. And that's important to understand as well, because we're not creating new pixels by interpolation, which is what needs to be done if you're using the V and G method. This doesn't do that, but it's the, at the expense of, of course, not having that same sized image. Now, there's another way to think of this, of course, which is you can, if you like the super pixel method, you can use that extraction method and then up sample everything back to um, the same size. And there might be an argument for doing that, but the way that PixInsight handles this, um, even with the VNG method, is good so long as you understand what's going on. And so that's, because when there's a problem, that's where you really want to see these methods, how they work, and what they're doing. So we have super pixel method, which is just the extraction of the pixels. When we have red, green, and blue here, we are literally creating a single pixel out of that triad of one red, one green, and one blue. Whereas this, of course, looks at all the neighboring values to determine how to make all of those pixels have a particular color. So going back here to our debayer, I'm going to do this in the default method, which is we will choose one image to do. doesn't matter which one, but I'm just going to pick the first one to be consistent. It's the same one that I have right here. and. Um, we will output it. I may have already done it, actually. Let me go see. Yeah, I do. I have a debayered directory here. So I'll just say, please put it here. Let's put it right in there. And we'll overwrite it if it's already in there. And I'll say, go, please, go ahead, do it. So debayering the image. And there it is. Now that just wrote it to the desktop. I want to write it to disk as well here. That didn't write it, they brought it on the desktop. Uh, but now let's do the other method, which is to apply the super pixel method here. And once again, we'll check out that image here. And I want to write that one as well, but I'm going to give it a slightly different name. There we go. Okay, so now we have these debayered in two separate ways. The first thing I'd like, well, let's see, I'm going to, we have a green cast. It really doesn't matter. It, it still looks green because it hasn't been color balanced. Uh, but the first thing I'd like you to notice is that uh, this, I'm going to call this super pixel here so we won't confuse them, super pixel. And then this one is going to be VNG. Look at the bottom here. You'll see exactly the size. The VNG is 5,200 pixels. 
whereas this is 2601. So this thing is half the size of what the original full size of the image was. Of course, it isn't the total number of red pixels that has just been interpolated. And that's critical to understand. So if I wanted to match these two images, first let's go look. We can see the stars in here, but let's go look at some of these hot pixels. There are some, uh, the green ones stand out so well. You'll notice here that a hot pixel here does not look like a single pixel, not in the VNG version, in the debayered version here. Whereas if we compare here, uh, let's see. So what I need to do is uh, let's make these even numbers. So if this one is, you know, well, that's okay. If that one is 10, then this one needs to be 20, like this. And then hopefully I can do this and that works. Ta-da, isn't that cool? So the, these are actually looking at the same piece of the chip. Here is the super pixel method, and here's what it looks like when you use VNG. Notice what happens to colors between here and here. A single pixel here, that used to be somewhat red. Look what happens in the VNG when it gets interpolated. A lot of that color actually gets smeared out. So that's something uh, that's interesting as part of the interpolation process because you're actually generating more pixels that you're going to be coloring. Uh, but it affects, of course, in this debayering um, the method that uh, if you had a single pixel, its color does get spread. And if it's something very bright, such as like what we're seeing here, it gets morphed into the kind of this plus sign. Now that poses a problem. The problem is that if you're going to now try to align images that look like this, they won't align. And that's because to a star detection algorithm like what PixInsight has when you use star alignment, this looks like a star. In fact, that looks more like a star than any of the actual stars do in this picture because it is so much brighter um, and it has the kind of profile that the star detection routine, I know a human brain, it doesn't, it doesn't look like a star, but to the algorithm, in some sense, it does. And it's very hard to then go in and manipulate the algorithm to get it to understand, hey, this is not a star, whereas all these other things in the picture, though they're fainter, those are actually the stars in the image. So I'm going to go off here, I'm going to pause, and what I'd just like to demonstrate is that if I debayer a handful of these images, I just did one here, but let me just show you if I do five, for example, using VNG, and then I try to align, what happens? Okay, so I debayered them. Now we can go to star alignment here. And uh, I'm gonna do file. Let me go open them. I will choose a reference. Doesn't matter which one, we'll choose the first one. I don't need the drizzled data. Add files. Files we want are the first five. Because those are the ones. Oh, ah. Uh, I need to do it in the debayer. The whole point of this is to go into the debayered. And those are just the lights. Sorry. Let me get into debayered. So that's the reference frame. And these five, those are the ones I want to align. Okay, got it. We will put it there. I will say registered. And that should do it. Go. All right, so here's the most important point. If we now try to blink those files, so they are in our registered directory here, unfortunately, what we're going to find is that they are not registered. I'm not gonna even bother to change the display. You can see they're not registered. But this seems in conflict with the information that's given right here. It clearly says that at the end, star alignment successfully aligned five images, but they're not aligned. This is the whole issue. This is the thing that people run into all the time. Now, it might not be because they didn't have the right calibration data. In this case, literally, it's because we're not subtracting a dark frame 
to get rid of the cos uh, to get rid of the um, the hot pixels using cosmetic correction or some other means beforehand. So instead, what we end up with are these pixels that are making it impossible to align the images. We can see that the story is literally being told here, because if you look at the translation, these are the amounts that the cons in the console it says what star alignment was trying to do. It was trying to align these images by a hundredth of a pixel. Well, obviously they're shifting around. This is not looking at stars. If we were to spend the time to use star alignment here, and instead of looking, uh, you know, at the images when they're done, we can just see through star detection what it actually saw for the stars. So that's one of the methods that we can use here, one of the output methods. Instead of actually doing the alignment, we can see what detected stars are. And you'll find that it's detecting, not the stars so much, as the hot pixels. So the story is being clearly shown here in the console, and clearly by blinking it's not aligned. All of this has to do with the fact that there are these hot pixels in the data. Even though they don't look that bad, they are that bad. Now, I've been talking about the one-shot color camera information, but this also applies to CMOS. The reason why this sometimes comes up with CMOS detectors is that the images tend to be very, very short. The exposure times are short, and that means that the brightness of the stars is perhaps similar in brightness, if not fainter than, some other sources of noise in the image, including hot pixels, even when you have correctly subtracted darks or biases or whatever it is for those CMOS sensors. So this has an analogous kind of issue when using CMOS detectors as well. Whenever you find that the console and the tool star alignment is telling you, hey, I align the images, but they're not aligned, that's what you need to look for. You need to determine what star alignment thought were stars. What did it actually align on? And you can see that here in the story of these transfer translations, the transformation that occurred from image to image clearly. Uh, this is not aligning on stars. This is doing something else. And then you can also see what it thought were the stars in the image. So that's the key. Now the final part is, what are we going to do? Well, the right thing to do in this case is to get rid of the hot pixels from a dark frame. And that might have solved everything, but I don't have a dark frame. So now I'm still stuck with, what am I going to do? So if you have hot pixels in your data and you're having difficulty, you probably want to use some means of getting rid of them. Cosmetic correction is the obvious way to go about doing this. You apply cosmetic correction before you ever do any aligning. That 90 plus percent of the time will take care of most problems. Uh, but you got to be conscientious about how you go about using cosmetic correction. So let's look at cosmetic correction here. I'm going to close the, these files. And I'd like to demonstrate, of course, what really does not work. This is a single file uh, that used, it was debayered using VNG. So it was debayered before aligning. And that, there's where the problem is. Let me, you already saw that hot pixels caused the problem. So maybe if we had uh, debayered and then used cosmetic correction and then aligned, it would have worked. And the answer is no, it doesn't. And I can show you why that doesn't work. If we go under process and then we go to cosmetic correction here, cosmetic correction will allow you to do a real-time view. Now to make life easy on myself, because I'm zoomed in and everything here, I'm going to go ahead and just make a preview like this. There we go. And then we'll do this in real time. I think I have to click on something to get the real time to go here. So this would be the method certainly that I can demonstrate because I don't have a dark. So I'm going to use the auto detect method. And if we now get this to go, ah, there we go. So notice we still have our quote unquote hot pixel, but it's many pixels. It's not a single pixel. Notice what happens if I turn off the hot sigma. Can you see how things do disappear seemingly, but Notice that the only thing that changes within the little plus is the center. 
And no matter what value that I might put here, it just it makes lots of other pixels kind of get smoothed and go away. Uh, but it will not make go away this thing, which there are many of these things scattered throughout the image, and that's what prevents the image from being aligned. So certainly you cannot expect to do um, a debayer and then apply cosmetic correction and then of course do uh, you know some kind of alignment or certain other kinds of things and expect things to always go well. In fact many times it won't go well. Now if we instead do something very different let's look for example I'm gonna close this for a moment and uh, let's actually look at this raw frame. The raw frame here, before we go debayer it, we can go find one of those hot pixels again. I'm going to go find one again. Actually, I should be able to find the same one because these two images are the same size. So if I take this preview here and apply it to this image here, we will be looking... Oh, well, actually, yeah, just add the preview. We should be looking at precisely the same hot pixel. Now, if we were to do the following, now you got to watch this one closely. If I use this now, let's turn this off. Uh, sorry, turn this off and on here and get our real time view. I'm not looking at the real time. Ah, thank you. Okay, so if we turn this off, you can see the, the hot pixel here. And then we turn it on, the hot pixel goes away. So what's going on there is that, you know, it's doing its job, it's removing the hot pixel. See, but there's a big but. This is not correct what I'm, about, what I'm doing here because it is removing this, but this has not yet been debayered. So when it's removing it, it's looking at the immediate pixel values, not taking into account that it's not the same color. Both the super pixel method, of course, because it's picking the exact ones, uh, is not going to mess this up. But VNG, the way that it works, is going to pick the correct colored pixels as well, neighboring values, and replace the appropriate color in here. This, what I'm doing right here, is not doing that properly. Um, so to do it properly, what you need to do is click the CFA button. And now when we do this method, and we turn on and off the correction, indeed it does work, but this time it's doing it in the proper way, because we told it, hey, this is, a, this is a color filter matrix, a color filter array, and you need to take care of these pixels properly, not just look at the immediate neighbors and don't worry about what colors they are. In other words, by checking this box, it's effectively in memory doing the super pixel extraction. That's why I showed you super pixel to begin with, because I wanted to show you how, by clicking the CFA button, it's doing cosmetic correction correctly. So that is the most important point, and this is what gives you the ability to solve a problem like uh, you know, what was presented to me here. What I have here, then, is a set of data that has lots of hot pixels. I don't have a dark frame, but if I use cosmetic correction, I should be able to get, thing to work, uh, get things to work. So let's close this, and let's go ahead and try to use cosmetic correction here. Um, I'm telling it it's CFA images, so the files that we want are not the debayered files. We want our original files, which are here, here. Okay, so I choose maybe the first five original, just like before. Now we're going to output them somewhere that makes sense. So I'm going to output them here. Actually, I don't think I need to type. Well, I can't. I can't remember if I need to type this. Cosmetic. It's good enough. Cosmetic. So I'm going to put them in there. And then we need to CFA correct. This is correct. That should be plenty. We do need to turn it on, or else nothing will happen. And go ahead and do the job. So this time it says five images correctly, cosmetically cor uh, corrected. That's not the exciting part. The exciting part will come here when we tell it, let's see here, cosmetic correction. These are the ones that are cosmetically corrected. This, I'm choosing the same file as I did last time. Clear these. 
and then these files here and then we're going to output them in registered but under cause yes under cosmetic I could just put them in the same folder but it's fine there we go that should do it okay so now if we open these up in blink we go to registered open up these files display them nicely we'll zoom in we'll look around just for a moment let's try to see if we can find some of those hot pixels the of course the hope is that that's not going to be easy to do they really really should be gone so let's look around here maybe I'm zoomed in too much but I don't see them which tells me that when I do this oh I undid that sorry and I do that and then I blink let's zoom out and zoom in there now the images are aligned the only change that was made to these images was just to simply remove those hot pixels now that you know may not be all that's necessary for this data because you know with proper calibration data I mean, aligning images is not a you know it'll be even easier uh, but here because we didn't have those darks maybe there were more hot pixels than you might like and so you really need to look at cosmetic correction make sure it's doing its job before the images are debayered and then of course you can do the star alignment so that I hope really illustrates something about one-shot color camera data, something about how to appreciate debayering images and what that means in terms of the super pixel method and in terms of VNG, which is the default method, by looking at many neighboring values and interpolating the images. And then finally, whenever you have a problem aligning, it could very well be because some part of that process is affecting the hot pixels not being able to uh, go away and so cosmetic correction is one of several ways to make sure that those hot pixels are not a problem so that when you get to aligning images it will work you know then what to look for in the console even if it says it's successful it doesn't mean that it's successfully aligned on what you thought it was going to even though it did in this case successfully align on hot pixels so with that in mind, I, I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit about CMOS cameras, about one-shot color camera data, about hot pixels, about debayering, all of these with this one simple question. All of that encapsulates uh, very important concepts uh, in image processing.